Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Eddie Austin YouTube channel. Today, we're going to do a video based on a request. That request uh, was done during a real estate meetup. Uh, there was a gentleman that was new to the real estate investment game, and he had asked if um, there was a possibility that we could have some type of video towards education on due diligence and what is due diligence. So I'm actually going to read off uh, one of our internal uh, documents that uh, we have formulated for asset due diligence. So due diligence meaning what boxes do we check off when we are getting ready to buy a piece of property? Uh, this can be uh, multifamily, commercial, um, warehouse space, um, storage units, all the above. I would want you guys to do this for anything you're buying. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. We're going to go over a multifamily asset. This is what we have this wrote for. So um, first and foremost, completing a due diligence for multifamily real estate is a essential process to allow potential buyers to identify any issues or risk associated with the property before finalizing a purchase. So this is our step-by-step -step guide on how to complete due diligence in the multifamily real estate. So number one, obtain all necessary documentation starting by requesting all relevant documentation related to the property, including financial statements, rent rolls, tax returns, and any leases or contracts associated with that property. Uh, this will be helpful in understanding the current financial operational status of this property. That is a must. That's number one. And even when we're underwriting this property, this is the first part of the process. Number two, physically a physical inspection, uh, conduct an inspection of the property and identify any visible issues such as structural damage, plumbing problems, is there water on the floor, electrical issues, is the units where you plug something in or the units, the uh, plug-ins burned. You know, just physically look everything over and I would hire a licensed inspector to perform throughout an inspection uh, of this property. Make sure there is no hidden issues inside of this property, none whatsoever. That is ultimately going to render the value of the property of having underlying things wrong with this thing. We don't want to do that. the third thing that we want to do we want to check property records we want to review anything that's in the courthouse is there any property liens is there any encumbrances on the property has anyone put something on title is the title accurate um, is any title work been done that renders us from buying this property um, we want to make sure that everything checks out. Is it zoned properly? Is there any building permits that has not been closed out yet? Um, you know, any local regulations or any violations by the city that's been put on this property recorded on title? You know, that's something that's huge. The fourth thing I would ask you guys to do is a market analysis. You know, you want to conduct a market analysis of the surrounding property, determining the rental value or rental rates. So what is the rent at currently? Or is it in line with the market or is it totally offline in the market? Hopefully it's totally offline in a cheap manner, meaning you can buy the property, get them up to a higher limit. Um, you know, the next thing, what is the vacancy rate? Is this thing vacant, completely vacant because they're charging too much? Or is there another issue underlying we don't know about at the time? Um, we want to look at the local market, of course, to see if we are, if this style property is um, accepted well in the community. 
Maybe uh, it's a month to month and everybody don't want a month to month. They want a one year term or maybe it's the opposite. So we want to look at those things. Is the property physically generating income and income in commercial real estate helps the appreciation of the property, helps land value go up because the property is cash flowing more. So that's what we want to look at. Okay, the fifth thing, financial analysis. What does that look like? You know, when we first started looking at this property, we started digging into what the financials look like on the property. Is it currently cash flowing? What's the rent roll look like? You know, now I want to look at the T12s. I want to really dig into that rent roll to make sure that there's physical tenants in the door. So I need a rent roll that has names on every single unit because I want to verify that these are actually rented units. You know, do they have pet deposits? Do they have first and last month lease? Is there, um, you know, anything fucking going on? Have they not paid their rent for a series of time? That's important. So we want to really do financial analysis. We want to overview financial statements. We want to make sure that we're getting tax returns on these properties to make sure that what we physically are filing taxes on is accurate with the T12 or that they're accurate with the actual rent roll, that the gross rent is the same on a tax return as it is on the actual rent roll they're giving you. So we want to determine that stuff because again, we are looking to, you know, the number one reason we're buying this property is because we want a safe haven to buy a piece of property that's going to appreciate with time and appreciation helps with that income basis. So we want to make sure those things are correct. You know, number six, I want to look at the legal review. I want to look at the, any type of legal agreements there is on this property. Um, meaning is such lease contracts, are they enforced? Are they being done properly? Uh, is there any attorneys or any other legal issues on this property? Again, is there any memos on title that uh, there's a contractor that didn't get paid? Is there any legal problems that there is something recorded on title to where when you buy it or the, the previous buyer, you know, those items need to be paid at closing. And uh, that's why they put a memo on titles because they're going to get paid the, the minute this property gets entitled again. So we want to look at those things for sure. So really dig in the legal side. You know, we've looked at properties before that there was a memo on the title that it was a, it was a tax lien. Actually, one of the properties we looked at in Texas had a million dollar tax lien on it. And the guy was asking 1.3. Ultimately, he didn't want to sell it because he didn't want to have to pay that. So that's something else we look at. The next thing we'll go over is a financial, or no, I'm sorry, not financial. We're going to look at the environmental side of this. Now we're getting down the nitty gritty. This is actually one of the things that I like to do uh, the minute that we're um, under contract for this property. So in this due diligence phase, one of the very first things I want to do is a phase one environmental study. Because this thing been built on a gas station. Has this thing had an oil spill? Um, has there ever been something, you know, severely go wrong? Is there a bunch of lead-based paint on the property? It's very important to do a financial, or not a financial statement. I'm sorry, I'm stuck in finances. Just do an environmental statement. Phase one for sure. So in doing an environmental assessment, we're going to conduct an environmental assessment on the property to identify any environmental risks such as soil contamination, hazardous waste, and this will help us understand the potential environmental liabilities associated with this property. That's big, guys. We want to really check that stuff out. The last thing I would say is insurance. Look at the insurance. Review the property and insurance policies and make sure it's adequate and necessary with the coverage. And you should consult with an insurance broker to make sure that the insurance is properly placed on this property. Now, it's not a great big deal when we're buying it, but yet again, it is because, you know, maybe they just have a, a, a big umbrella policy over the top of it and it really doesn't protect much. 
So when you're looking and when you're underwriting and you're actually looking at the cost of this thing and they have a, a line item for insurance and it's, uh, you know, maybe a thousand bucks a month and it's a couple hundred unit property, that may not be a true statement. So we want to actually get insurance quotes, uh, at least three of those to make sure that we have the correct insurance on the property and that it is a valid quote for how we want to protect those properties when we take over ownership. So that's pretty big. Um, the last thing I will talk about is how we want to look at hiring property managers. So this is going a little bit at one step above due diligence phase, um, but at the same time, it's something I want to do uh, when I'm looking at a property, when I'm doing my due diligence on a piece of property that I want to buy. Um, number one, I want to verify that expenses are correct, just like we just talked about with insurance. You know, is the property management um, correct? So the smaller the property, the higher the percentage of the uh, fee that a property management or asset manager will charge to manage a pro piece of property for you. If it's a 10 unit building, you could pay up to eight to 10% for that. Um, if it's a big property, three or 400 units, you could probably pay as low as three or 4% for property management. So those are big. So, you know, I want to, if it's something outside my backyard, then I want to make sure that these um, fees that are being charged this property are correct with my T12 and my, my financial statements proving that, okay, he's saying that he's paying $2,000 a year for property management or asset management and uh, that those things are physically correct with that property. So when we look at hiring a property management company, we usually interview three companies and then we actually ask for referrals that we can go and ask on how they're doing on that. So you really want to check through this stuff, guys. That's kind of that financial area. You want to really back check all these things that they're being told is true. You want to make sure they're true. Just don't it's look, it's our financial responsibility and our fiduciary responsibility to our investors to make sure that when we buy a piece of property, we didn't miss something. That's going to be a big deal. So we want to make sure that we're checking all the boxes. We're digging up all the skeletons. We're making sure that everything is the way it should be. That's what we need to do. If you guys like this video, please don't forget to hit the like button and smash that subscribe button as it helps you stay tuned with all this media we're bringing out. And we have multiple channels and we will refer to those channels just like we just opened. Uh, J.E. Austin Extraordinary Capital. It is a opportunity for you to learn how to go from a syndicator to a real estate fund manager. And we will walk through that step by step. And we're here for you as much as your coach, as your accountability partner to make sure you get to the finish line. So it's something you like, make sure you ask me about it. Y'all have a great day and thank you so much.